So I hope you have uh, spent some time hearing the first talk because I, I want to go back on security and stuff. Um, I will really briefly in include, um, introduce um, Alambic and we will follow with examples. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a little bit stressed. I'm pleased to be in Bruxelles because I hope I could have some French language support maybe. <laughs> and um, let's go. So, first, uh, sorry. So, this is just from the documentation of Halambic, uh, and a uh, just small introduction. So, it's uh, what Stefan has said. <laughs> and there is another tool called uh, Secure Alchemy Migrate, which is, I think, still, migrate, still maintained by the op uh, OpenStack team. I don't ask me questions about Secure Alchemy Migrate, I could not answer to them. <laughs> I never tried it. And, um, when we when we decide to, to use um, alambic, so I seen I saw there is two two tools, and when you go on the SQL Alchemy Migrate um, documentation pages, we say okay, if you are new uh, with with um, SQL Al Alchemy, please try please use alambic. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little bit straight. <laughs> please use alambic and uh, don't, don't. So I didn't go away on um, SQL Alchemy Migrate. That's all. Just somewhat, I don't to spend too many times, sorry about me, just somewhat, it's just to show you a little bit more of a context. I'm not uh, at all a database user. I spend time, time studying mathematics and something like that, but not so much time with uh, playing with a database and uh, less with an, an, an um, SQL can database. Sorry? You can speak a little bit louder. I will try. <laughs> you can't interrupt me again if uh, my voice is going down. <laughs> Please. So um, I, um, I was not skilled at all on, on um, uh, SQL stuff. So uh, um, SQL Alchemy for me is a very great tool. <laughs> I could keep away of, of um, problem with dil dilate. I could I could I could uh, work uh, with classes instead of working with table, which is a mo more well-known environment. So it's a very good thing for me. Um, I feel myself as a very young Python developer. I've never learned Python, in fact. I've started with Django project. So here I have an ORM, and I feel um, confident. And in this Django project, we are using source. So for me, it was really natural to use a tool so like, um, like Alambic, because it provides you some, um, um, a, a way to handle database migration. And it's also something you can have in, in your today process. If you, have to, if you need to, have to, to migrate something in, in your database schema, you have a tool, you have, uh, you have script, you have sort, and you, can't, you can sorry, um, uh, pro, um, update your, your whole project in the same way with Python script. So f for me, it's well, it was, it was um, a good point. So today, I'm, wo I'm working in the SysWorth team where where we are writing a new RP open source RP system dedicated to special co special uh, customers, and this project is based on, pi on PyQt and SQL Alchemy as well. Um, sorry. So, I want. So you have seen plenty of thing thing with SQL Alchemy. I will stay in the declarative extension, which is the. the um, sorry. <laughs> which is the, the tool we are using uh, today in, in our uh, project. So Alambic, um, in our project, first we were using Postgre and SQLit. But when I first tried Alambic, I tried my first example you with a um, SQLit database. And all my migration were empty. Because in SQLit, you don't have any alter table stuff. And so most of the time, migration are empty. So I will um, avoid, of I will uh, let SQL Alchemy uh, uh, lo aside right now. Um, with Alambic, you can use two modes. One is the offline mode, that is, uh, Alambic is doing nothing on the database. It's just providing you, you the um, SQL command you have to run, uh, some, some, uh, and, uh, some you, have to, you have to run. You may do not have. Uh, you know, may not, not have direct access to the database. It may to be, to be a, uh, to, to a client or to someone else. 
but we are not in this case. In our case, we are running alumbic migration on online mode. That is, migration when the mig migration is, r is run, the database is update, and the database schema, schema too. Uh, we are mostly using uh, alumbic auto migration stuff because I think it's very easy. You are making um, uh, an update on your on your application. You are modifying your model. You are running auto migration script and is is sometimes is empty, sometimes is wrong. But the, the the frame is there. You have a migration script and just need to update it. Um, so I will continue with some very, very basic example to show you how you can, um, how you can um, use this, this tool. I was very surprised when, we begin, when I began to use Alum Alumbic to find there is low documentation. There is documentation, but if you ask some question, if, you are, if you are there is something you, we, when we, we, with which you are blocked, it's difficult to find answer. So. This talk in it in a way the one I have I had to be very pleased to find some months ago when I started to work with this tool. So the examples are very, very basic. So first thing, you have written so um, a class with the help of um, of a of a base um, uh, const of a of base stuff coming from uh, um, SQL Alchemy. So it is exactly the same one as the talk before. A very simple, very simple um, base class, and we we'll let's suppose that you have set up your alumbic um, environment. I won't explain it. It's very well documented in the documentation. You can find talk talking about, it and it's really, really, really simple. What you can see, so if I open my um, PG admin stuff, it is the beginning of my project. I have only one table. This is the table that has been created by Alambic itself, and it's um, a way for, hi for him to, to, to trust, to, tr to take the, um, no, sorry, to, um, to know at which migration level he has. So he's written, he's, as he has answered this table in my, in, my, um, in my database, and I have no other thing because I have nothing to do. I've right now, I've I haven't called, for example, the um, Cradle method, I'm going to update my database schema, which is empty, with the help of Alambic. So the first thing you are going to do with Alambic is to, to create um, a migration script. So this is the command line you have to, you, you, Alambic provided to you. And what can we see there? Uh, first of all, Alambic is, is pro uh, first of all, we have a re revision number, which is some kind of hash number, which is the number of the revision. This is my first revision, so he has no done revision. He's importing some stuff and is creating my table. So Alambic is provided an, an operating um, framework. In this op very small variable that you have a connection to the database, which is there, a context and a connection, and is able, uh, and method, of course, and is able to create the table itself. You always have a downgrade, a downgrade method because when you are upgrading a database, you need to be able to, grade it, to downgrade it after. So this script is automatically generated. You can have it in your repo. You can share it. You can update it. And you, of course, if you want to update your database, you have to run it. So this is, on the top, this is a command line you have to, to call. Um, head is the a generic name saying, let's run all the migration uh, from the last one you have, I have made until the last one which is provided in the directory when the, mig the migration script are. And what can I see? Here I have a new table, my door table with its colon and so on. So it seems very easy. <laughs> So let's try with anoth another example with a foreign key. So I've written another table, a collection one. I wanted to make some collection of doors. So and as uh, we have seen um, with in the previous talk, I can have a collection um, foreign key here and the relationship there. 
and I will use, I so I want to update my database schema with this new table column and with this new table collection and with this new column. So I will use my, my tool running a, ma a migration. I, I will use my, so I will r run the migration, the migration tool. I will get a script and I'm running my script and what I get is there. If I look closely, my foreign key is missing there. So this is Alambic is, is uh, able to handle something for you automatically. For, but for example, it's able to add a colon, is able, is automatically is able to add um, a table. But if you are just adding, um, uh, um, if you're adding a colon, which is a foreign key, the foreign key con constraint is lost. Here, he has added my collection table, which is right. But he has, for, he has forgotten my, for, my uh, foreign con constraint on collection. So you have to, as it is um, a script, it is a Python one, you have to just to update your script in order to, to correct this. So how to do this? So uh, what I've highlighted is here, it's, the, um, the it's what I've modified in the automatically generated script. So let's forget it for now. What we can say in the automatically generated script is hiding the collection table, which is right, and then he has it is hiding is hiding adding sorry the colon table, and this line is forgotten. So there is other way. So this is one way to help Alambic in order to 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 do the migration. Um, uh, uh, we, there is another way in th in the with um up command, you, ca you, ha you have also, um, 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 sorry, um, a foreign key, an, a cre um, create foreign key command. So I could add this foreign key here, constraint here in my colon, in my, in my SQL key colon, or I could write another command there saying op dot um, create, foreign key com create foreign key constraint at, at after end. And as usual, you have a don't go we have you have a don't go table, and the order is reverse. So you have first to drop the colon before dropping the table. Um, so let's try with another. Sorry, another. Uh, the resulting another make uh, another um, the resulting another script. So what I've done there, I've mo I've added some. Nullable to, to uh, some constraint of a nullable. nullable f um, sorry, I've had in some constraint of a nullable attribute. So uh, Alambic is able to recognize them, and I've added a new colon there. But if you are running this this script like this, and if your data ball is empty, you have no problem. If you have some data in your data ball, it won't work because you will have uh, an, an exception. So I will go back later on, on this um, example. I want to show you something <laughs> else with how to add an enum colon, and then I will go, go back on this example. Um, so how to add an enum colon in, this is what I've done in my classes. My, m for example, my model dot, dot p stuff. I've had in, had in a very simple in enum colon, and if this is the script which is auto which is automatically <coughs> generated by Alambic, and this, this script does not work does not work again, because um, we ha you have to create the enum tip before. So how to change this script? It's not very, very difficult. And um, as you have the, po the, po for the, the power of SQL Alchemy, you can do whatever you want. So first, you create your enum tip with the help of, s of uh, SQL Alchemy. Then you, uh, with, uh, when you are when you have a, ta a type in SQL Alchemy, you can create it, and it will be created in the in the database if you get the opt-get bind. There is a connection, the connection with the database. <coughs> so then, you you have your first you create your, your type, 
then you add your, your colon, and if you don't go in migration, you do the reverse stuff. But this is not enough yet because of this constraint. Okay, if you have some data in, in your in your in your database, this won't work. So you and as you are in a scope of 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 secure alchemy, you have all all the tools. So from my my no, let's show you my next example. Um, so you can add default values because. Um, as you have a connection, I can also import my, my dot classes. And for my dot classes, I've got a table. And as I've got a connection from uh, Alambic, you I can do an, an execution statement, as you have seen. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just before. And then you can update uh, uh, in, your migration in, in your migration script, you can update your data and put the, the, um, the default value like this. So here you have all the power of what you have done, of what you have in, in, um, in, sec in SQL Alchemy. You can do mostly what you want. So if I go back on my previous example where I have a fail because I have data and I have, uh, I have um, um, an, an errors, I, I can't, um, I can, um, r um, ex write, writing my migration script, I can choose what I want to do. If I have a, fa uh, a wrong data, I can skip it, I can update it, I can add the default value, and so on and so on. I can log it in the file, I, I can do whatever I want. So I've done something very simple in, this ca in the previous case. So just I've put default value. So I, I take all the I've take I look at the, at the rows that were wrong. I put a default value, and then I, I, I could put my constraint. So I will show you another very, very simple example, which is renaming a colon. So the, um, for, for Halambic, it's, it has no way to understand if you want to rename a colon or if you want to remove to add a new colon and remove the, the, f the previous one. So the, if, you are, if you want to, to rename a colon, a colon is generating this script. So if you don't have any data in your database, this script is very good. It's enough. It will change the name of your colon and you will be okay. If you have data, it's not. But so Alambic is, is provide you um, uh, a method <coughs> to do this, which is the alter colon, and this, this alter colon has many, many features. So I will just showing one here, which is changing the colon name. But with this, you can do many, many things. <coughs> so I won't show you some more examples because I haven't today. We, um, but I will be pleased to answer to a question, but I have some question for you too. <laughs> so this kind of example, I was, I would, I said uh, some minutes ago, I would be very pleased to find them on the web as, for example, uh, w in the SysGraph team, we are using uh, PyQt, and if we have a very silly question with PyQt, you can ask it in Google, and we have plenty of answers. With Alambic, it's very difficult to find, to find, um, to find uh, an answer to my, I, w I was difficult, had difficulty to find an answer to my question, so I wonder why. <laughs> is SQL Alchemy Migrate more used? I don't think so. I'm not sure I've taken Stack Overflow, for example, the, the question with the tag SQL, Alchemy, SQL Alchemy Migrate and Alambic, they are at the same range, not the same number, but the same range. Does people don't use tool to make, to use, to handle migration? Uh, is is this tool too young? Is this I don't I don't and so I have a question for you. <laughs> I don't understand why. <laughs> I've finished. Yeah. It's so we have we have time for questions. Uh, sorry. You, you have, you have oui, mais je fin, I've finished. <laughs> I've told you I was a little bit short. So, so does somebody could answer to my question? 
<laughs> or not. <laughs> I think it's just a complicated, a complicated. The alembic tool is it's it's not an easy tool to use. Huh? Um, so I think uh, when you start with your project, most people they just drop the database and create a new one. It's only when you yeah. when it becomes but operational that you start needing the tool and that reduces the number of people. Yeah, but, but in our context, we need to have data in our database and to, to keep them. Sure, sure. So. <laughs> So well for me, it was it was. If you have only one database, so if you have only one database, you can do the migrations <coughs> by hand just as easily. Yes. So you only have you only need this tool if you have multiple databases on an operational level, and that just reduces. But you are. For me, it was a, a nice tool because you are you are keeping history of what you have done, yeah, and if in your project, for example, if you have a branch. And you are here, and you have a bug here, and you want to test if you bug. You can downgrade your, your your database and upgrade there and take the thing, and you are losing nothing. So I, for me, it's what's very uh, important to have such a tool in a project. Indeed. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's, it's because it's a tool uh, more like for DevOps and not exactly for dev people. Like in, in my project, I would love to use such stuff, but uh, I don't have enough time, basically. Mm -hmm. like, uh, it's always quicker to do it by hand, although it's not as good okay. as your tool, because I don't have DevOps. Yes, so maybe it's because of my context, because for me it was difficult to say, well, I don't want to open the database itself. <laughs> I, I, so a tool, it's a, it's, a, it's a way to handle this, this, um, this problem, which is more um, high level, f maybe, or... There is some question. Yes. Uh, there's a SQL Alchemy mailing list, and the author of Alumni yes. is very active there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> question you ask yeah. There. <laughs> yeah, I know. The, uh, the OpenStack project is only maintaining SQL Alchemy Migrate um, to help us move off of SQL, mig SQL Alchemy Migrate onto Alumni. Uh -huh. so, I do think you, that you made the right choice to go with the limit, like you okay. said earlier. That's definitely the, the new tool to use. And I believe that over time, more people will be using a limit than SQL Alchemy Migrate. As so I can find an example before writing them. <laughs> 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 OK. <laughs>